Um, I, got, I, went, I got to go to Encounter a conference. I went. I, I drove Friday. I left Friday at five fifteen and drove to Dallas and a monsoon. And it was a uh, not the brightest thing in the world, but I did anyway. And um, it took me three and a half hours to get to Euless. It usually takes less than three. And it was just pouring down rain most of the way. You didn't hardly see. And um, I'm just trying to get there. And I was actually five minutes late, which really drove me nuts. But um, uh, got there and uh, had a great time uh, in that conference. Um, uh, didn't even tell anybody. I, I told Naomi I was going, but uh, just went. I wasn't planning on being able to go. And um, I just went. And, uh, and I'm very glad that I did. It's always good to be around other people, other points of view. You know, we get we get trapped in our own little Pentecostal Church of God, Temple of Praise viewpoint, and um, and we don't realize that there are people out there that love God just as much as we do, and they they care about God just as much as we do, and they're not afraid to tell it just like we're not. And uh, it's just nice to be around different people. And I went down there, and I knew Jerry and Kelly Kuhn were going to go, and I knew uh, that. Um, that uh, Becky, no Becky, um, Clinton, holy, uh, help me out, Gary Elizabeth. Oh my goodness, Gary and Elizabeth were going to be there, but I, and I knew Andrew Payne was going to be there. I knew a, a, few, a few people that would be there, but Tecumseh brought a, a group of kids, and Jerry brought a group of kids to it, and uh, it was just amazing. Uh, it's amazing to see how well, well represented Oklahoma was, and uh, and I, I just really enjoyed getting to go and being just. Uh, I think I, would, I think I drove about as long as I was in the conference, but that's okay. Um, that's just that's typical. If you're going to go to something, you've got to go to something, right? You've got to get up and go. And, uh, and uh, so God is good. I said all that to say this. To say this. It's amazing how God is pouring out His Spirit out on churches. And we get in our little bubble. And we don't think that God's doing anything. And, and, you know, if God's not doing it for me, He must not be doing it for anybody. And that's just not incorrect. I mean, that's just not correct. Uh, God is God is pouring out His Spirit on all flesh right. in the last days. Right. God is pouring out His Spirit, and, and you see these churches, and you talk to these pastors, and, and yes, encounters a time that you can get together and just be preached to. I don't think it, I think uh, you guys that get preached to every week realize how precious that is Amen. to sit under somebody speaking into your life, yeah. uh, just to sit there and, and just. Eat that up. Amen. Just to sit there and just, and, and, and uh, because as a pastor, I, I get my, my church comes through a computer screen or my phone. And so I get preached to through my phone or through a computer screen or to my television screen. And it's different. It's different. It's not, I'm not saying feel sorry for me. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is it's just different because uh, that interaction and, and, that, and that person that just prays, God, give me a word. For you, I'm getting a word that they've preached to millions. But sometimes I feel like it's just to me. You know? And so I, just, to, just to be able to sit in three or four services and just have someone pour into you. And you go, oh, that tastes better than Dr. Pepper. That's like ice water with a glass full of ice. Don't you hate it when the restaurant brings you a glass half full of ice and it has this, just this floating on the top. It's like, could I get ice, please? Can I get like a cup of ice with that? Yeah. It's not ice water. That's water. That's water. I said, you're just teasing me. You know? And so I, we went to um, Washington, D.C., and we asked for ice water. And it was like we had three heads. They don't put ice in their water. They put a pitcher, a little pitcher thing with water and glasses. I'm like, uh, that's, can I get some ice? Ice? Yes, it's frozen this. I need this. Okay, and, so I, and they looked at us like we were crazy, didn't they, dear? They don't do that. And so I guess, it's, I don't know if it's an Oklahoma thing or a regional thing or whatever. It must not get hot enough. But I think it's hot in D.C., I don't know. But anyway, long story short, it's good to get poured into, challenged. It's nice to be challenged. It's nice to have someone speak into your life and not care if you like it or not. It's nice. Uh, we had a lady who's uh, she's one of the directors of Messenger College, and uh, and she she spoke uh, some things. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions that she asked us, and I just you know I never thought about it this way. And I was gonna her name is Fiona, and Fiona I can't remember her last name, 
Fiona asked us a couple of questions. She said, I want to ask the pastors and the leaders that are here. You know, we all raise our hand. Yeah, of course, no bad. Okay. And so we have to raise, raise our hands so everybody can clap for us. I don't know why they do that, but anyway. Um, so she said, okay, y'all, you guys that raised your hand, pastors and leaders of churches, when's the last time you said you, you, you want a soul to Christ outside of church? Outside of church. I know you have ministry, and I know you do altar calls, and I know that people are being saved. That's great. But when's the last time, pastors and leaders, that you want somebody to Christ outside of the four walls of your church? Good. Good. And I was like, I need to go. She's really ticking me off. No. Uh, I just, she, it was challenging, though. Challenge. Challenge. Ch- yeah, that word. That word. Challenge. Challenging. Okay. Anyway, and so I can't say challenge. challenging. Okay, and so and so she did, and um, and I, I, I guess I, I I think of church so often. I gotta change my dress. Um, I think of church so often. That's much better. That I don't guess I realized it's been a minute. It's been a minute. You know, it's not good enough to motivate you and educate you, disciple and send you, if I'm not modeling what I'm motivating you to do. And, and, and so I, I, I was very convicted, very challenged. She, she spoke, not wasn't hateful at all. She just spoke to us and asked us a question. When's the last time? Outside of your quote unquote ministry, you've won someone to Christ. Mm. It's challenging. I'm not going to ask you. I just want to leave that with you. I'm not going to ask you to stand and raise your hand and all that. I'm not doing that. I just want to challenge you with what Fiona challenged us with. When's the last time? And I preached this morning for just a minute, not too long. On who needs me? Who needs me? Very familiar passages of Scripture. I'm not going to throw anything at you that you've never heard. I know that most people in here would identify themselves as Christian. If I ask you to stand, most everybody in this place would stand. And if you didn't, it's just because you didn't want to. You're being disobedient. And so, if I could ask you to stand, I would ask you to stand, and nearly every soul in this building would say, I'm Christian. I identify with Christ. He's mine. He's my Savior. And I, and I, I dare say that if I asked this question, I wouldn't get really truthful responses, but it would be, who in this church has problems, even though you're saved? I know the super spiritual Christians would say, oh, I'm just, I just trust the Lord and everything is just fantastic. Hallelujah. And that's great. And you should trust the Lord. And everything sometimes is great. And that's fantastic. And I'm glad. But there's still challenges in our lives that we have problems and we have to deal with. And there's still issues. Even though we are saved, even though we are the ones that God has uh, poured his anointing, his, his life out on, and we have accepted Christ, and, and we said, "Yes, I'm, I'm going to live for you, God, for the rest of my life." When it's con- not, not just when it's convenient, sorry. When it's uh, when it's the best of my ability. Who <coughs> needs me? Jesus asked, "Who needs me?" If you have your Bible, turn to Luke chapter five, verse twenty-nine through thirty-one. <coughs> New King James. Uh, I've wrote mine out of New, New Living Translation, and I'll read a little bit of that to you in just a minute. But this is then Levi came, and Levi is who? Matthew. Okay. He gave, came in, in, in a great feast in his town, his own town, house. Sorry, and there was a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with him. And there's and the scribes and the Pharisees complained against his disciples, saying, "Who do you? Why do you eat?" And drink with tax collectors and sinners. And Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well need no physician, but those that are sick. Can you pray with me just a minute? Father, thank you. Thank you for a wonderful church that I have. 
Thank you for a wonderful place to come to preach the gospel to the thank you for the saints that you were you have you've given us, God. I thank you so much for them. And Father, I give you praise and I give you honor and I give you glory for every one of them. Father, anoint your anoint anoint me because I know your word is anointed to preach the best I can for you this morning. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. I have four pages. I'm not going to get all four pages done. Uh, Brother Ethan, can you turn this one up just a little so I don't have to yell? Uh, saying too much and my voice is still not strong. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate it, Daniel. Thank you. I think I said Ethan, but I meant Daniel. I'm sorry. Um, those who are well. Who are those who are well? If I had you stand up, you said you would stand up and say that you're Christian. If I, if I said who, those who are well, who are the ones that would say I'm well today? I, my soul is well. How is your soul today? Your body may be sick and maybe your, maybe your spirit is weak, but your soul, how's your soul? How's my soul today? If I, if I, if I say that I, I, I'm well, then it doesn't mean that I am perfect. If I say that I'm well, it doesn't mean I don't have any problems. If I say that I am, I am well, it doesn't mean that I'm not going through something, but I am determined as well. This morning I stand here as a pastor of this church and, and the, I have a hernia that sticks out. I have, uh, I, uh, I have a um, hamstring issue that I hurt myself uh, uh, a few years ago. Uh, I have some other things, uh, some blood pressure issues that are, have cropped up in my life. And, but I'm not sick to the point they put me in the hospital. I'm well, but I'm going through some things. Right? Okay, I have a hernia that everybody can see because everybody stares at it, whether you know you do or not. Everybody looks at my stomach first. <laughs> I know you don't mean to, but you go, hey, hey. And so, and so, just letting you know. And so I, I have something physically that you can see. Okay? I have a hamstring issue that you can't see. Right? I have a blood pressure issue, somewhat, not horrible, but somewhat, that you can't see. I have those issues that, that are in my life. I'm not considered ill. I'm considered well. But I still have some issues in my life. I still have some things I have to work through. I still have some things. So I am considered well because my, my soul is well. My body is basically well. It has a few things going on with it. But you know, to be 51, I think I'm doing okay. It says, for those who, are, those who are functioning in health, I'm functioning in health. Maybe I'm not perfect, but I'm well. Those who are in the kingdom of God or the saved, those are the ones we call well. Because your body may die, but as long as your soul is well, you're well. Come on, somebody help me a minute. Who are the sick? Let's define the sick. Those who stand opposed to God are sick. Those who are functioning but not well are sick. Ignorant of the things of God, no checkups. You don't know you're sick, you're just sick. It's the ones, the people that they find, you know, oh, all of a sudden they had stage four cancer, they didn't even know they were sick. No checkups. That's just a love. It'll go away. It never goes away. I, I finally, I, I finally can't, I can't move anymore. I got to go to the doctor now and find out exactly why I'm, I'm, I'm not moving. Like I can't breathe. Uh, you know, something's going on in my life. And so, so, finally, it gets so to a point that you have to find out what's wrong with you. So you get a checkup or you go to a doctor's appointment and they find that there's something wrong, but you were ignorant of it. You didn't know, but you're ignorant of it. And so they are called the lost. Those who are sick are called, quote unquote, the lost. So I want to ask you a question. What is a win for our church? When I say we're going to win, what is a win? Is it great breakfast? Do we have great breakfast? Michael and Doug do a fantastic job. And Joseph, they do, and, and Kinsey and whoever else, Michael, they do a great job of fixing breakfast for everybody. Is that a win? Well, sort of. How about an excited door greeters? High five like I was last week. Hey, I would like to have signs in the parking lot. You look gorgeous. 
It's cause. I'm crazy, and I think it's awesome. And the Bible always rolls her eyes at me, but I love that kind of stuff, okay? Listen, have a, uh, an awesome worship set. Man, win. Woo, that's a win. I don't know. How about I, the pastor really brought it today? Is that a win? I don't know. I made it through another Sunday school class without killing any kids. That is a win. I will give you that. That is a win. Attendance was over 140. Is that a win? Hmm. What is a win for us? What is a win? Hmm. I'm so glad you guys said that. Because it's been a minute. It's been a minute. We file in, we file out. Come to church. And I love it. I'm glad you're here. And I love coming. To, I love church. I'm a church kid, man. I love church. I think I love church more than my wife loves church. Because she said, I don't, want to, I don't want to go on a date and go to church. Well, that's a date to me. <laughs> I'll buy you a hot dog, man. Let's go. You know? We go to church just giving, out, giving us a coffee. Two birds with one stone, man. <laughs> Hot chocolate, not coffee. But what's a win for us? That all that stuff is good and we preserve the saints? Or if we take the gospel to the sick? I know we know the right answer. I know, listen, now anybody sitting here is dumb enough to say, hey, church is for the sinner, like for the saint, not the sinner. I know we're not dumb enough to say that, but that's how we act. The church is for us, and not for everyone. Listen, I know you guys need help, and I know God, that's why I said, are you sick? Yes. Are you sick that you have issues? Yes, of course you have issues. And you come to church for God to do with those issues. I don't, I don't begrudge that at all. That's what we're here for, is to help you. That's why it, it, when you're sick and you call, and we'll, and we'll try to get to the hospital as soon as we can and check on you. And, and when you have issues in your life, we try to help you. Listen, but what is a win for us? A win is not just simply maintaining the crowd. That is not a win. A win for us is when somebody comes to an altar and gives their life to Christ. A, a win is when somebody raises a hand and says, would you pre please pray for me, Pastor, because I'm having a hard time and I, I don't know Jesus like I need to see Jesus. I, I don't know Jesus like I need to know Jesus. And, and they raise their hand and say, would you pray for me? And I ask you to come forward so I can pray with you. Why? Why do I ask you to come forward? I don't ask you to come forward to embarrass you because this is what Jesus said. If you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. And you've got to make a decision and you've got to... Make a declaration. Yes. Amen. That's just my that's just my preference. Not every church. That's I just think that you need to make a declaration that I I, I want to make a difference in my life. Amen. Jesus said I came for the sick. Those who are well need no physician, but I came for the sick. In Luke 15, 4 through 10, it's the story of the lost sheep and the lost coin. The lost sheep. I have to find the one. The lost sheep. Jesus said, I'm going to leave the 99 because that one's calling me. And I never, I never really understood this, and I probably still don't understand it fully. And I never understood how, you know, Jesus had the 99, and the Bible says he never leaves us nor forsakes us, but he left the 99, and he went after the one. I never, I, I didn't say never, but I, I always struggled with this verse because I, I didn't understand how Jesus would leave 99 in the wilderness, if you'll read it. He leaves 99 in the wilderness to go find the one. Why? Because the 99 were saved and their souls were good. They were there. They were, they were, right, listen, he leaves the 99 in the wilderness. They were under God's protection. They were secure. They were well cared for before he ever left to go get the one. They were well cared for. Amen, somebody? Amen. The 99 that knew the shepherd's voice. Yes. 
Because another voice they will not follow. So even though they were in the wilderness alone, they knew the voice of their shepherd. Can somebody just help me a minute? And so they were not just 99 in the wilderness scattered. They were 99 well taken care of. Well, uh, they were under God's protection waiting for instruction from the shepherd when to move. Help me again. Come on, come on, come on. They were, number one, they were motivated, they were educated, they were discipled, and they were sent. They were motivated to follow Jesus alone. They didn't follow just everybody. They followed Jesus' voice alone. They were educated to follow only His voice. You know, it's, it's good to hear that, but it's hard unless you've been through something to understand that. Listen, they were educated to follow His voice. They were discipled to stay when He said stay. Nobody likes discipline. Nobody. I grew up in the go pick a switch generation. It's just a generation I grew up in. Go pick a switch. That was parts of getting whipped. Yes, it was. So there's a guy had a, a, I saw a t-shirt the other day that said, um, I, I get it right here. I grew up in a whipping generation. It, it caused me to have respect. I'm not saying beat your kids. Some of y'all need to. But I'm, yeah, I'm looking at you. Not, not looking at you. Looking at you. Okay. So, okay, some of y'all. <laughs> I don't want to know that. Okay, okay, so. But I grew up in the biggest switch generation. My mother's 87 years old. I didn't grow up. I'm going to count to 705. And if you want to, come over here. I, I didn't grow up in the kids screaming at parents generation. I see that at the I see that at Walmart stuff, and I said I've heard of your kind, but I've never seen you. <laughs> I don't understand that. I'd have been dead before I ever got out of Walmart. It would have been a funeral. That'd have been straight to Walmart for the funeral home. It'd have been it would have been, it would have been sad. I never. I don't understand the scream at your parent generation. Now, Johnny. Woo, Johnny. Anyway, nobody likes discipline. Root word disciple. What's the root word of disciple? Discipline. Why? Because you have to be disciplined to follow after the voice of God and not follow after every other voice in the history of the world. You have to be you have to be discipled or disciplined to follow after Christ. You have to be discipled or disciplined. You weren't here. Uh, some of you guys were here last was last Sunday. I preached about the the fig tree. Yeah, the, the fig tree about how God would dig up you know dig up the roots and find out what's wrong and dung it. Yeah. 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 Some of y'all still got a smear on your face this morning for <laughs> being dumb. Now, I'm just telling you, because what God will do, you have to disciple, you have to be disciplined in what God's doing in your life. You have to understand how to live for God. You don't just get saved and that's it. Right, right, right. There is a process called discipleship that 12 men went through for three and a half years and still didn't get it right. Amen. There were 12 of them that went through just by the voice of God, Jesus, for three and a half years, and they still had to be, God, they still had to go through some stuff before they ever put into play what Jesus gave them to play with. Yeah. And so we have, have to understand there's discipline that has to be taken care of in our life. So we have, it's great to be motivated, and it's great to be educated. Yeah. It's great. It's great to come to a Bible study and talk about the lost coin, the lost sheep, and how that, and how, that's great, that's fantastic. But that's, but when you have to be discipled to where you only use, that, listen, I'm only going to use what God gave me, I'm going to be disciplined. And when he says stay, I'm going to stay no matter what, no matter what Kimmy says, I'm staying. Amen. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what some slick hair, shiny shoe preacher, need to sell a book, told me. I'm going to stay because God told me to stay. And his voice.
voice will I hear. No other voice will I hear. Because the thief comes over to do what? He comes over to do what? Kill, steal, and destroy. But he has come to give me life and life more abundant. And I know my shepherd's voice. Amen. And if you don't know your shepherd's voice, come on. Hmm, I feel bad for you. I feel bad for you. Of course, you know the story of the lost coin. She swept the entire house. She had ten pieces of silver. But she lost one. She swept the entire house and couldn't find it. She lit a lamp and went around trying to find it. And she finally found it. And she celebrated with her neighbors and all her friends. I skipped ahead of myself. When, they found, when, when the shepherd finds the sheep, he doesn't just say, you stupid sheep, and whack it in the head. No. He didn't take his staff and grab it by its neck and drag it home. He put her on his shoulders. Yeah. For his burden is easy. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Yes, he put that lost sheep. He didn't put it, I'm, I'm this down, but he, he didn't put it through a 27-day course of how stupid you are right. for getting away from the 99. Right. He just simply went and found the sheep that was lost, knowing the other 99 were well protected, well cared for. He went after the one. Picked it up. Put it on his shoulders. And I don't know if you know anything about sheep, but sheep stink. And it'd have been like, I'd have had a stick poking it to the right. Get, get over there. But I'm not a shepherd of real sheep. Shepherds of real sheep smell like sheep. So it didn't bother him. Put that, she that sheep on his shoulders because he didn't notice the smell. All he knew was the one that was lost is found. And if you read the story, they go back to his house. He didn't leave the 99 in the wilderness. He came by, by and got the 99 and said, let's go to the house. And they begin to follow him. And so they go back and they follow him. And they follow him to the, to the, to the house. And he goes and tells his neighbors and they have this big party and they're celebrating. Because the sheep that was lost is now found. And the Bible says that's how it is in heaven. When one sinner comes and repents. When one sinner comes and repents, there's a party in heaven. In your honor. That's just amazing to me. Oh, this is just amazing to me. Here's where I want to get to and I'll leave you alone after this. All the efforts. The leaving the 99. The looking and searching until you find the sheep. Having ten silver coins and losing one and now you have nine and you put those away safely and you look for the one and you sweep and you light a lamp and you move the furniture and you do everything you can do to find that one. And when you find it, you celebrate the one, right? Yeah. You celebrate it because you found it. It was lost, Heike. I think the church so I think the church so has lost our zeal for the one. Because if our nursery's not right, I'm not coming. If our music's not right, I'm not coming. Who's preaching tonight? Oh, I'm not coming. Where's the zeal for the one? The one that's out there waiting and is lost. And they don't know where they're at. They think they know, but they don't know. Of course, the coin is an inanimate object. It has no feelings or thought, but it's still lost and it's still valuable to her. And the sheep crying in the wilderness. Lost. Lost without hope of anybody finding unless the shepherd comes by. The only thing that's going to find me is a wolf. Right. And a ravening wolf is going to come and rip me apart. Yeah. And tear me from limb to limb. And eat me and, 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 and scatter my carcass all over the wilderness. If the shepherd doesn't come find me. All of her efforts were to find the one. Yeah. The one. Right. Church. We have a great church. Yes, we do. Yes. 
I'm not criticizing you at all. We have a great, I think everybody in Seminole would love to come here if they just knew about it. I just, I, just, I, I love, I just, I, I love you. I, I thank God for you. We have a great group of people that, that I believe love God or you wouldn't be here every week. I just need to refocus you a little bit. It's the, in the New Living Translation, and I'm, let's go back to uh, Luke chapter 5. Start with verse 30. I'm going to wrap it all up. I didn't mean to get so bogged down. Really. That was just a sidebar. Verse 30 says, But the scribes and the Pharisees murmured against the disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? In the New Living Translation, it says, Why do you eat with such scum? The Pharisees and the teachers of religious law complained bitterly to Jesus' disciples. Please don't get here. Please don't get there in your spirit. Please, please don't be the Pharisee and the teachers of the religious law and complain to Jesus when and, and, and say, why do you eat with such scum? Jesus came for them. Then verse 31. Jesus asked them, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Sick people need a doctor. And I know you, I know you Bible scholars are like, I came to church to hear about this. I know this. I know you know the story. But hear me. Healthy people. Stand to your feet if you're saved. <laughs> No judgment if you don't stand up. I'll, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just go say that you're lazy. Okay. And so, okay. You're saved this morning. Spy out the church. Look. Look. Do you see a problem? Ninety-nine point nine eight point percent. I'm preaching salvation to the saved. I'm. 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 Let me Thank you for saying. I'm giving medicine to those who need no medicine. Not that you don't need help from God. Not that you're not needing something from God. Not. Not that at all. But when we talk about Jesus Christ and we ask Jesus into our lives and we believe that God is our Savior and Jesus is our Savior, I believe, like most of y'all stood up and I believe that you believe that and, I, and I'm glad. Because I get to be in heaven with you guys. I think it's a fantastic thing. But do you see an issue? When's the last time you invited a sinner to come to church? Not, no judgment, just asking. Just asking. When's the last time that you, that you said, hey, can I just bother you for a minute? My preacher preached this. He said that only through Christ can I be saved. And, and I just want to ask you a question. This is how, what happened to me. What do you think about that? And open a conversation. Hey, this happened to me Sunday at church. I, I, I just want to ask you a question. I'm not saying you woke up some stranger and say that. I'm talking about somebody you know that they, that's not saved. I just want to ask you a question. My pastor said that Jesus came for those who are sick and not the well. What do you think? And open that conversation. You can throw me under the bus. It's okay. Dude, I've been run over so much. I, I, I have like tire tracks on my face. It's all good. Okay, I'm good with that. Listen, use me and say, my pastor said this. What do you think about that? But you better know what you think. You better know what you know. But hear me for a second. There's something wrong. Come on. Good. I look at church. And there's something wrong. Here's what we do. We spend 90% of our time 
keeping the saints happy and 10% of the time reaching out to those who aren't saints. And I think we have it flipped. I think we have it flipped. And here, you know why? This is what I think. Sister Becky, can I just preach to you for a minute? Here's what I think. I think it's so much easier to preach to you guys. Because I know you believe basically what I believe. It's so much easier to talk to you guys and to preach to you. There's no challenge. I mean, nobody's going to stand up and say, oh, Jesus is not the Son of God. If you did, we'll ask you out. And so, and so, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's not. I think we just have it flipped. I think the church's job is 90% of the time reaching out and 10% of the time keeping us happy. That doesn't mean that you don't need things from God. Please understand me. But I, I have to believe that Jesus thinks of us as the 99 who are supposed to be able to be motivated, educated, discipled, and sent without him constantly standing there with a staff ready to whack you in the head and keep you in the pen. I just have to believe that if we're part of the 99, that we have got to suck it up and grow up and be who God has called us to be. Amen. And quit depending on me to be your Bible study. Amen. Quit depending on me to be your prayer time. Amen. Quit depending on me to feed you and feed you and feed you and feed you. At some point you started feeding yourself, didn't you? Sabrina, when you guys go out and eat, does Blake have to feed you? You can handle it, right? Only when he's being all sexy and cute. And so, and so, <laughs> listen. Oh, that was okay. And so, uh, I have done very well feeding myself, as you can tell. I need to stop feeding myself sometimes. The chili dogs are good. Okay, and so. God, there's going to be a table full of Sonic chili dogs in there. All right. No onion. No mustard. All right, listen. <coughs> I'm about to wrap up. I know this isn't scream and holler, run around the aisle stuff. But I want to challenge you. Why do you eat with the scum of the earth? Jesus was simple. He didn't get mad at the scribes and Pharisees. He didn't say, you sorry, vipers, not this time anyway. He just said, they're the ones who need me. They need me. I wish you'd be honest with yourself sometimes. And, and as a Christian, we walk through this thing sometimes and we act like we don't need God a lot of times. Oh, Jesus, you saved me. I'm good. Hallelujah. I love you. Peace out. I'll see you tomorrow. You know, and we, we do that and we walk through life and we don't let Jesus have control of our life. We walk through life and we just do life yeah. and we react to things. And But it's the ones who don't know him and then find out, wow, he loves me, he cares for me. Those guys, those guys are the ones who Jesus said they need me. Amen. They need me. I believe this, is, with all my heart, this is the last thing I'm going to use today, and I'm going to close with this. Sister Lisa, we can go, please. How many of you guys would say that you're whole, your soul is whole? Amen. I'm, I'm well. I'm, my soul is well. I believe that Jesus called the whole to call the sick to repentance. Amen. It doesn't make sense to me, Billy. And guys, maybe you can help me. It doesn't make sense to me to say, I'm well and you're well. Hey, you want to be weller? <laughs> right. I know that's not a word anyway. Uh, <laughs> hey, you want to be weller? Let me let me give you this. I got this big revelation. Let, let me let me I got this thing and it's gonna it's gonna blow your mind. Let me show you 
show you how well I am and then you get to give me something that makes me even weller. Doesn't make sense to me. Where I go to say, I know you're sick. I got the cure. Let me tell you about it. And those that are sick are now made well by what God gave me to give to them. Guys, look at me. Look at me. Look at what else. I know. I know. I know. It's not easy. It's just not. You know why? Because we haven't done it. It's so long. It feels awkward. Not everybody, but you know, some, some of us. We feel awkward telling somebody about Jesus. Really? He's the most amazing thing that ever happened to me. He transformed my life. He took me from death and destruction to a wonderful life. I chose to follow him. I love what you said today. Thank you. I chose to follow him when I didn't have to, but I chose to because he called me and he said, hey, I know you're sick. Let me make you well. <coughs> Let me help you be whole. Let me fix that hole in your life. Let me transform you. Let me change you. Let me get you to a point that you can look at your life and say, I don't know how I got here. I was a life support. Spiritually. I was a life support. And I could run a marathon now. I am so whole and well. Can I tell you guys something? It is so different. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the freedom. When you wake up the next day and you go, all that junk's gone. raising your hand and I'm talking about repentance. When you've given your life to Christ, that's what the church was built to do, is reach those that are lost in, in the wilderness, can't find Jesus, don't know about Jesus, can't breathe because they're so bound, lost, screaming in the wilderness, and Jesus said, listen, I trained you, I've taught you, I've motivated you, I've educated you, I've discipled you, I'll send you, but right now you're gonna just take care and I'm gonna go find the one. Can I ask you a question and I'll leave you alone. I want you to stand to your feet with me, please. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Right now, God is bringing somebody to your mind. Right now, somebody is in your mind that God is placing in, this, in the, Holy, the Holy Ghost is putting in your spirit right now. There's somebody that God has placed in your path and you and you know the Holy Ghost has said, hey, you need to talk to them, you need to talk to them, you need to talk to them. And you've put it off and you've put it off and you've put it off. I don't know how to open that conversation. I told you, Hal, use me, throw me under the bus. It's okay. Open that conversation because there's somebody right now in your spirit. Who's your one? Who's your one that God has placed in your spirit? Who is it? Cousin? Worker? Somebody that's a gas attendant? That you see every week when you go get gas? Is it somebody at school? Is it somebody in your own family? Is it your wife? Is it your daughter? Is it your son? Who is it that God has placed right now in your spirit? I believe with all my heart if you're called of God God places a one in your spirit to go talk to use me throw me under the bus I'm here for you to be used hey my pastor said what do you think about that hey my pastor said if I will be faithful to God God will be faithful to me what, have you ever heard that what do you think about that open that door they're not going to believe like you believe 
They may think, uh, I don't know. But hey, this is just what I just, you know, just use me. Open that door. Amen? Amen.